We're gonna ramble about stuff. Today we're gonna actually try to stay away a bit from religion and metaphysics in this ramble. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be reacting to a rather fascinating comic strip that I that I think was making the rounds online just a short while ago. It's one of those very well-crafted comic forms that is designed to elucidate a concept or an idea and it uses, you know, a kind of a basic narrative story and it employs colorful pictures and pleasant looking infographics so this particular comic that i want to react to is about something called benevolent sexism which i think is a very important concept to be aware of today and which i think the comic broadly does a very good job of explaining so i'm not going to be running through the entire comic here i just want to focus on one or two parts that I want to comment on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by summarizing what benevolent sexism is in case you've not seen the comic before yet and then we'll zoom in on the parts that I actually want to comment on. So benevolent sexism is a sort of disguised sexism where a person who is actually sexist, that is he in fact holds discriminatory views or attitudes toward a particular gender hides this, whether consciously or subconsciously, by kind of covering over it with niceness of a kind of apparent and meaningless form. So an example also given in the comic would be like that of a, let's say there's a female worker who finds herself being showered with compliments but compliments of a kind of superficial, meaningless, fluffy sort. And at the same time finds herself not being entrusted with responsibilities that matter, not being appreciated for her actual work performance. In short, she is kind of treated like a pretty ornament that is put on a pedestal, but not actually respected as a fellow human being or as an actual fellow worker. This is benevolent sexism in a nutshell. So I'm not sure I like the name very much because frankly there's nothing benevolent about it. Fundamentally it is about denying baseline human dignity to a person of a particular gender but instead of doing it by stereotyping and dropping up certain uh, perceived gender weaknesses, you drum up these inconsequential and superficial stereotypical gender strengths and cover over your actual discrimination. It is a deplorable thing and it is certainly something that we need to fix and I do recommend checking out the original comic for the full treatment there. Now here however I would like to narrow down on some part of the comic that I think you could say bad clarification and that I, you know, of course, want to comment on a little bit. So let's take this part in the comic where it says, gallantry is the most common way benevolent sexism is expressed. Gallantry used here in the sense of courteous attention toward women. Sometimes we say chivalry. Now, the reason I think this part bears clarification is that these words can be understood as gallant behavior entails benevolent sexism or that is gallantry is a sufficient symptom of and is inextricable from benevolent sexist behavior. Now it's not clear whether or not the author intended such a reading but it is certainly a reading that is possible and I want to bring this up because I think this is incorrect and we can make a very simple argument for it like this. One, we understand sexism in all its forms as involving the inflicting of some form of negative effect 
of the gender being targeted. And two, Quartier's attention toward women does not necessarily result in inflicting any negative effect, and therefore gallantry does not necessarily result in sexism in any of its forms. Put another way, one can be gallant and non-sexist. Gallantry is a potential tool to be used as disguise for sexism, but not necessarily an indicator of sexism even if it may be a tool that arguably is used a lot. But any good person, I think, should know intuitively that gallantry can come and should, in fact, come with, you know, no strings attached. One oughtn't be opening the door for a woman in order to bind her to some obligation, say, to pay you some attention, or to subordinate her, or to cover up the tracks of some actual disrespect that you've shown her elsewhere. Gallantry can and should be performed as an absolute favour, unconditionally, if you, if you will. Now, I understand that this is somewhat controversial nowadays, and, you know, there are a lot of straw men thrown about by both sides of the argument. Now, one could ask, well, why are you giving women in particular these extra favours? Which, on the face of it, is actually kind of a silly question, because when is it ever a problem to give genuine favours away for free. The real reason I think one is driven to ask a question like this is because it seems to smack of foul play. If you're giving favours that you're not obliged to give, especially if it's given only to members of a specific group, like women, we think you must have some motive, some hidden agenda, some skin in the game. And I think to an extent this reflects where we stand today as a people. But let's remember that all of our best moral guides have always advocated unconditional giving since ancient times. So it really shouldn't be a concept quite as strange as it, as it tends to seem in modern times. At any rate, I think one must at least grasp that in principle, it is possible one can and ought to be gallant in this unconditional way. Now the reason this is important is because we have a tendency towards witch hunting, to become very hung up over a detail or a symbol and to let the ensuing noise drown out the actual principles at issue. We would do well to be reminded and double reminded that what we want to fight is sexism and the offence to the common dignity of all human beings that it entails. We don't want to be hijacked into fighting a battle over something like gallantry, which by itself is inert. Be gallant or don't be gallant. Either is fine. But always respect all people for who they really are and fully are without reducing them to sign labels and stereotypes. This common human decency is the real guiding principle of feminism. Now, a few words ought to be said in the other direction as well. If gallantry is courtesy directed at women, that naturally courtesy ought to take the beneficiary's feelings into account. There's a fair amount of sentiment out there now hating on women who would complain about gestures like doors being held open for them. Now, while it seems right to me that gestures like holding the door open need not and should not imply superiority or inferiority of position, although they occasionally can, still, if a woman feels uncomfortable for whatever reason about having a door held open for her, then it hardly makes any chivalric sense at all to knowingly do to her what you know she doesn't like. How is that supposed to be courtesy? So it bears keeping in mind that gallantry is a principle and not tied to any particular act like holding doors open or paying for meals and whatnot. It's about doing genuine favours. So if you'd like to do something nice for a lady, do it because it really is something nice. And if still your lady lets you know for whatever reason that she's not comfortable with it, that's alright as well. Just apologize graciously and stop. Likewise, if a man tries to do something nice for you as a lady, don't assume it's a malicious gesture unless you have a good reason to. And if you don't like it all the same, that's okay as well. Let him know clearly, but graciously. 
Sincerity and clarity of communication can take us all a long way. With these in mind, let me end on a speech bubble near the end of the comic. Here, the author writes, The flowers I got and the bosses complimenting my smile. It all seems certainly like more bars on the cage I had to escape from, now more than ever. Now, on the one hand, I think we ought to note the impact of benevolent sexism here, causing her to begin to view apparently nice things as something as sinister as bars in the cage. There is a genuine insidiousness to this, because it can genuinely be hidden. To an outside observer who may not be aware of the details, it may really merely seem to be some niceties, and this woman may then end up being unjustly thought of as an ingrate. On the other hand, the words she has been driven to use here also edges us towards a kind of dangerous cynicism, one that would have us begin to demonize niceness itself. So let us be clear once again, there's nothing wrong with niceness, there's nothing wrong with flowers or complimenting people's smiles. What is wrong is doing that in order to cast smoke over discrimination. Discrimination has had and will always be our actual enemy. I hope you all can remain sane, continue to fight the good fight with our eyes wide open and with our minds fully awake. And that will conclude today's ramble. Hopefully it has been at least somewhat interesting. Thank you very much, as always, for listening to and watching these experimental videos. More will be coming, although at no uh, set schedule, unfortunately. But we'll see. I haven't made a vlog in a while as well, so I may try to make one in the near future. Whatever the next video is, I'll see you when it comes out. Thank you very much.